Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for July 15th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mrs. McKenzie. Here. Mrs. Hopkins. Here. Mrs. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Thank you. And since he does such a fantastic job at it, we're going to hire him again, Mr. Cook, for the invitation. <laughs> an extra page. Yeah, you get a penny. <laughs> Please buy your heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together tonight. And again, please embrace this group so that we can do the will of the people. Please provide the protection for our first responders, our deputies, and our fire department. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll finish that later because there's All right, we'll move down. Actions on the regular scheduled council meeting for 7119. Mayor, make a motion to accept the minutes on 7119. Second. Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Mrs. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Here. Yeah. Mr. Cook? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? <coughs> Minutes accepted 6 0. Thank you, ma'am. And dropping down to communications, Mr. Greer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. Um, I'd like to introduce a special guest of mine. His name is George Lebo. He is a, a bold demolition and, and excavating, and he is here to speak with council about the Madison Street School. I have known Mr. Lebo now um, two years, maybe. Um, uh, very nice guy. Um, he approached me not too long ago when Madison Street School was a topic of debate um, and had presented to me, and of course I don't have the authority to accept the deal, um, but I did want him to come to speak to council on his proposal, because I know we all have been looking for ways to remedy the Madison Street School situation. Uh, Mr. Uh, Liebold, if you want to take that podium right there, uh, you'll be required to state your name and your address for the record. Hi. Sir? My name's George Liebold. I'm with Bold Demolition and Excavating, uh, 18 and a half Penn Street, Springfield, Ohio. Um, we've got um, a demolition company and uh, Heard you had a problem with getting a school down and getting rid of it, and so we stepped in and we've been talking to Randy about it. And hey, Mr. Lebo, can you speak up just a little bit? The oh, acoustics yeah, here are just not very good. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, you want me to go on into it, Randy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me? If you want to take it, or do you want to take it? I can do it. Why don't you go ahead and then I'll. Okay. I'll sure. Sure. Uh, what we've been talking about is a good, uh, remedying the Madison Street School. Clearly, we all know it has to be demoed. Um, we had an asbestos report done on it last, or earlier this year. Uh, we did find out it was about $30,000 worth of abatement work for the asbestos that's in there. Uh, so we do know that's a charge that we're going to have to, at some point in time, face. Uh, Mr. Liebold is proposing a, a, a kind of a hybrid deal here. Um, and we'll have to talk later about the asbestos removal at a later date. Um, but what Mr. Liebold and I have been, been discussing is he would remove uh, the dem demo of the Madison Street School, uh, remove all the debris. Uh, but the cost of that would be $100,000, and he would retain the ownership of the land to help recoup the um, difference in the de demolition cost. When we got it quote, quoted to demo, Kim had done it, I think, $250,000, $300,000 to demo at that point in time. But that had nothing to do with the asbestos that was in there either. So we do know that we'll have to, again, as I previously stated, the asbestos removal, we will have to uh, talk about at a later date. Uh, but that is, uh, Mr. Liebold is, has a willingness to help the city. Of course, he's going to have to uh, have some sort of payment for us, for him to go forward with that. As I said earlier, I don't have that authority to accept his proposal. That is something he would have to come to council to discuss. And I suggested he come at a council meeting and put him on communication so he can tell council what his plans are, and this would be a good opportunity for you guys to ask him any questions, if needed. Council? Any questions? Matt? Ms. McKenzie? 
Um, do you have anything in mind that you would be putting on the land that you would retain? We would um, keep it available in case somebody else came along that could move a little quicker than us, maybe to put up some uh, housing. Mm -hmm. And um, we just touched kind of briefly on it, what it's zoned at. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, that's what we got in mind. So you would resell the land? Is that what you're saying? It would be available if somebody was ready to move quicker than we were. Okay, not to hold things up, but if uh, somebody came along and wanted to buy it, and Don't quote me on that. they were ready to fly, you know, we would um, let them jump right in there. But until that day, we'd have it uh, cleaned up, straightened up, grass, keep the grass cut. So what I understand your proposal to be is um, you would charge the city 100000 to d demo it, and then you would take ownership because you're not charging us as much as right. other companies would be to demo it. Yes, the figures I had heard were 250 to 350, and uh, you know we're we're not a great big company. We're small, but we can handle it. We got the equipment and the know-how, and we can take care of it for you. And uh, one other thing I had mentioned to uh, Randy is that. If um, if you wanted to say pay us 125, we would take on the asbestos removal and the school, and you would pay that up front. We'd take care of it, and that'd be that. We uh, we came up with the people that gave a, a good price on the uh, the asbestos abatement and the cost to remove it. And they're reputable. So that would be separate. That it would be all. If, if you paid us 125, we'd handle it all. But 100, okay. it would be separate. Yes. Okay. And um, now I don't. I'm sure his price is still good because what he he turned that in in February, didn't he, uh, Randy? I'm sorry. Mike turned that in in February, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Asbestos. So I'm sure the price would be good for probably another 90 days or so, but I can't say what it would be after that. You know, things change. Uh, Anything else, Ms. Hopkins? That's it. Thank you. Mr. Libel, what disposal site would you use for the uh, the fill debris? The debris? The hard fill, we would either go to Steve Rouch's landfill in Dayton or we would use Tony Smith here in Springfield. There's also a C&D landfill in Greene County, Xenia. So we've got a, we've got three different ones, okay, that we would use. And the, uh, the soft fill, which would be like plaster, wood, and stuff like that, that would also go there. Um, we do have some other outlets for the hard fill, which is the concrete and the brick, and um, they could use that. Okay, are you planning on uh, doing any crushing on site, or are you planning on hauling out as is? Hauling out as is, other than breaking it up to get it down. Yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't crush on site. And we would bring fill in top it off, plant grass, like I say, keep it mowed. And, uh, I'm just wondering if uh, that gymnasium is going to have to be drained before the uh, demolition would start, because I would assume that gymnasium is full of water. Mm -hmm. Last time we were in there, I didn't see any. I haven't been down there in like, well, we were just down there like three months ago. I think there's some standing water, but not like I can swim in it. Yeah, you're talking. Yeah. This much. There is leaking from, uh, clearly there's leaking, but as far as it being a lot, I don't recall. And we'd be work, we'd be working real close, of course, with RAPTA, the Regional Air Pollution Control. They, they got like, they got a pretty tight guy line on things. And I would assume when you backfill that, you're, are you going to compact that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Cook, 
Didn't we have a discussion about uh, crushing some of that up and using it? Is that something that we could ask Mr. Leibold if he can crush on site and reuse some of that stuff? I, that would probably be entirely up to him because, you know, at this point, I don't know. I think he'd have to look and see whether or not the crushing on site would be cost effective rather than hauling off in a bulk type operation. Um, my thought would be if you were to crush some of that and leave some of that material for the city to use and possibly some of the other townships around here because I think that would be a valuable commodity uh, once you crush that concrete, um, the brick, and you pull all that metal out of there, I'm not sure too much of what you're going to have to haul. There'll be quite a bit there, but uh, the heavier stuff, they have a little trouble grinding it anyway. But we've got a place for the heavy stuff. Now, there are some machines you can lease or rent. Right. Mobile. We could check into that. No, I don't. <clears throat> do you ballpark? Do you even guesstimate what it might cost to do that building just for payment with no hybrid deals or whatever you may call it? I mean, is it probably still in the three hundred fifty thousand dollar ballpark area? I mean, just a rough guess. Well, I think I've been talking to Randy for two, three years now, and that's what it was then. Okay. Things aren't getting cheaper, so. Okay. And and if it if, if this was a deal that was done, you wouldn't. Be attempt, not that you could legally do it, but you wouldn't be attempting to use the property once it was leveled to store equipment or machine. Oh, no. Just level it grass and sell it off more than likely or build something. Yeah. We either uh, we'll put some housing in there or we can sell it to somebody that would put some housing in there or something, not for storage. And yeah. It wouldn't fit, that's for sure. How many acres are there, Mr. Bridge? Uh, around seven. seven. And don't quote me on that. Right. It's been a couple of years. Okay. I, I mean, me, me personally, I like the sound of the idea. Council, any other questions? Thank you, sir. We appreciate the uh, time and All right. the uh, offer. Thank you. I think, uh, Mr. Bridge, we should probably uh, have more discussions on this. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to recommend, um, we are so close to starting our 2020 operating budget. We clearly didn't allocate $100,000 in our 2019 numbers to do that. So I think that once we get the council budget season, it's something that council is going to have to vote hard, uh, discuss hard. Um, but we'll, if they do decide to go through with you, there'll be legislation that they would have to vote on. Depending on what they, what they can sell. Anything else, gentlemen? Guys, for Mr. Cox? Good. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank you. You want to leave your cards and I can give them out to them? Yeah. <coughs> well, he's got, he, he, he doesn't crush that. He's talking to boot food and big bucks for disposal. Well, I can't do it. One wouldn't be feasible for us to get the guy to Whenever you're ready, Mr. Bridge, the city manager's report. All right, and here we go for the city manager report. And All right, thank you. Moving on. And we'll start off with our finance director, Ms. Debbie Watson. Good evening, council and residents. Our June 2019 report finds us with our total revenue uh, with the general fund with $440,110.18, and our June total expenses is $386,345.17. Our year-to-date totals, revenues, there's $3,146,684.47, and our expenses are lower, $2,842,988.37. Um, I want to apologize to Council. I forgot to put the check report in there, and I, he, uh, Mr. Bridge let me know. I emailed him this morning. I forgot to make copies to bring to you, but I can get those to you, so I apologize for you not having them in your packet. Do you have any questions? Council? Any questions for I got one. Can you go over the pool report? Uh, sure. Okay, so um, 
our revenue to date is $40,056.85 and our expenses to date is $37,307.61. We're not looking at that $40,000 and so the pool is making some money at $2,749.24. So and that's just, kind of exciting. Right. And that's that's also stating the pool on its own has covered the, 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 modern, or the updates that it's done this year all on its own at this point. Has a transfer been made? Yes. Oh, the transfer has been made. Oh, it has been made. Yeah, it has been made. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, but I'm just showing with, if we're just looking at what they brought in to what they've made, Okay. it's 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 on the, you know, it's good. So if we don't have those kind of expenses next year, right. the pool is folding its own. Gotcha. All right, thank you very much. Still a much needed positive report for the yes. pool, so for that we appreciate the April. Hi. Yes. Oh, Mr. Collins, sorry, right, sir. Can I ask a dumb question? No, no, there are no dumb questions, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Lowry comes in here and starts making money on the pool. Nobody investigated the previous ones running the pool. It kept losing money. Uh, it lost money because of um, lack of managerial oversight and not cutting people, keeping the pool open when it wasn't busy. Um, a lot of our expenses are from labor hours and stuff like that. And of course, the pool's gonna have a lot of equipment malfunctions. Uh, but what we can see is that the labor hours were just abused under prior leadership. I mean, hats off to Mrs. Lowry sure. on the job she done to get back up there. There's a total night and day pool operation than what it was a few years ago because of uh, um, uh, April Lowry's managerial expertise of watching the labor hours, cutting the pool when it's not being busy, but more importantly, it's bringing the events in that come to that pool that has, it's severely missed. Uh, the previous managers didn't have a lot of private events. They didn't have, um, a, you know, the movie nights. So I think this manager has taken and looked outside the box to bring more people in, which mean more revenue. All right. And with, with my research when I came here, because where I, um, fiscal officer in Miami County, we don't have a pool, so I did a lot of research. Most pools do not stand on their own. No, they don't. They don't. They just don't. So the fact that she's doing all that she's doing is, is a, says a lot. She's brought a lot to the to pool to make some money. I mean, I just had to ask the question. In the mm -hmm. previous year, we, we never made any money sure. for four or five years. Boom, she comes in here in a year and a half and turns it around. Of course, we can keep the mayor, keep drinking, or quit drinking pop. We got <laughs> get a refund. I'd, I'd be rich. <laughs> Kevin, all serious. April, you, Ms. Lauer, you did a fantastic job. We thank you. The citizens thank you. The council thanks you. Thank you. But no raise. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think a speech is important. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Hopkins, did you have something? Oh, okay. I thought I saw your hand up. Took it, Frank. All right. We good? Thank you, Ms. Watson. Thank you. And moving on to City Manager Report, I have excused Mr. Kitko today. Howie is up doing some late work on Galewood. Uh, so I told him just to finish up on Galewood and head on home, and I take care of his report. Um, so let me go read it for the record. Service Department uh, will be completing minor road repairs in the area that need a more in depth repair, such as ruts uh, created from trash truck operations. We have four additional water main breaks to dig up and repair, so the water department will be busy. Road de-icing salt bids were received. New Carlisle will verify the bid and make a recommendation to award to Cargill Salt for the same price as last year of $89.95 a ton. There will not be a minimum order amount this season or any cutoff dates for order. I'm going to retract that last statement because we had a discussion today, so um, I will have to clear that up and I'll, I'll email council out about the minimum amount of order. 2018-2019 uh, various road projects, uh, Galwood, Re Galwood Drive reconstruction project. Uh, reconstruction started on July 8th for an estimated 80 days. TZ Holzen was awarded the contract for $334,639.50. The new Carlisle st uh, street levy share is approximately 41400 Street resurfacing project, Hemlock Butternut Buttersweet are complete except one manhole adjustment. Cost is approximately $45,420.66. And before I go on to the next bullet item, I just want to say that we have all done a fantastic job in the past three years of repairing streets in this city at a rate that we have not seen pre uh, previous years. 
So um, thank you to the council, the citizens, and everyone else who's been involved in that because our streets are being repaired at a rapid pace. So thank you, everyone. Uh, 2019 uh, wastewater uh, plant and fluent building upgrade. New and fluent pump is fully operational. Peterson Construction was awarded the contract. Pre-construction meeting set uh, for 7 17 19. Traffic signal upgrade project. Plans will go out for bid 9-12 of 19. That's just a few, uh, 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 few weeks away. Contract will be awarded on 9-23-19 and construction will be completed by 8-31-20. And that's to refresh everyone's mini, uh, 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 memory. That is the traffic signals that we're getting on 571 and 235 and also at 235 in Lake. They're the new modern ones with a single arm. They come out and they communicate with one, uh, each other. And that was at no cost to the city. Uh, we got it through uh, grant funding. That is all Mr. Kiko has his report. I'll be happy to uh, write down any questions uh, if needed. Council, any questions or comments? Mr. Bridge, you and I discussed the acoustical situation here at the shelter house. Have we gotten anything done on that? I have instructed Howie to start working on that. He will start that hopefully uh, next week. He's getting through all the construction projects and then we'll tackle that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kitko. Well, thank you. And moving on with the city manager report, we'll do with our fire chief, chief trustee. Mayor, council, citizens. For the month of June, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 86 EMS calls in the city, 21 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to six fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Run number uh, total as of today is 642 runs so far for the year. Uh, we had four EMS calls answered either by Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 being on response. Uh, we answered three mutual aid EMS calls from Pike Township and two EMS mutual aid calls from Bethel Park. In the month of June, the division responded to one overdose call in the city. Other than that, summertime. 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 Council. Any questions, comments for Chief? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate the update. Thank you. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to the City Manager Report, our Police Administrator was Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and citizens. In June, the Proud Deputy dispatched 58 calls. I said assaults, there was one, domestic violence, there was 10. Theft, we had eight, non-injury crash, one injury crash. Our deputies up here had none. Drug complaints, none. Overdose, two. Suicide attempted, one. And burglary, four. And then in the memos at the bottom, our new Carlisle deputies are having a high volume of domestic violence calls. This is for the last couple months. And please keep in mind that a lot of the time the family member ends up being arrested that's just another hardship for the whole family. So uh, we're experiencing more in our share of domestic violence up here. Um, we have had one night in June that we had 10 or more auto break-ins and only about half of those reported to the Sheriff's Department. Other than one night of multiple auto, auto break-ins, the rest of the month was quiet. Uh, please lock your car, keep your valuables in the house. And if you do witness anything suspicious, uh, call the Park County Sheriff's Department. And it's fair time again. The Park County Fair will start at noon this Friday, and we'll run through Friday of the following week, and that's the end date is one June. I'm sorry, July 26th. <coughs> fair is always a good time, and we look forward to seeing everyone there. And from June 20 to June 30, the Ford Cloud patrol cars patrol just over. 1,300 miles and that's I've been doing this a long time that's about typical we usually it for a month usually run high 4,000 something so it's that's fairly typical and again please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious this could be the phone call we need to save solve a crime or save a life and that Concludes my report. If anyone has any questions, I will try to uh, answer them. Thank you, sir. Council, any? Oh, sir. Mayor, thank you. I just want everybody to be aware. I come home late at night, and I actually almost hit somebody on Washington Street last night. She was walking in the middle, not directly in the middle of the street, but like right here, and talking on her phone. 
couldn't see her, came around the corner. I was like, whoa. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, there's tons of people out at night. So just w what I see. So All right. that's, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. Appreciate the report. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on to city manager report under informational items. Uh, new city building update. There is an emergency ordinance tonight in front of the, count, uh, in front of the council. Uh, we had a uh, floor plan meeting, I guess, here a couple weeks ago, and council had voted to remove council chambers from the overall design of the building uh, for a for multiple of, of very great decisions, actually. Um, the council chambers, if it were to come with us, would have been very small. Um, and then there's discussions about moving council chambers in a couple years if a certain building would come open or not. So council really had a heart to heart with themselves about do we invest now or do we invest later? So they chose to invest later. Or what that did is it changed the scope of our project. Um, when we had the architect down here, that floor plan was set to go. Um, and that included the council chambers. But since we took it out, he had to go back and redo uh, the plans, redo the construction drawings. Um, like I was explaining to some council members, when you originally have um, the, where the council chambers were, that's, a, that's a, the, the state of Ohio, the county classifies that as an assembly use. And one of the requirements may be you got to have dedicated air supply, so its own HVA system, because a large amount of people will be assembling in that spot. Well, since we took that out, it changed the scope, and then we wanted it to be a storage building. Well, that changes the use to a storage use, not an assembly use. So that's going to have a whole set of requirements for fire safety. When you're storing that much paper product in one concentrated area, you're going to have to put fireproofing around the walls and stuff like that. So that changed the scope of the project. You had to go back and redo all the plans for that. So we have saved a lot of money by taking council chambers out. and. Um, Another thing that uh, new code is permit, prohibiting to have is the stairwell in the front half of the building. And uh, I had to decide to take that out. Current code states that when you have a stairwell in a building that's used for business, um, Mr. Cobb, you good? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, when you have a building used for business, that stairwell has to be fully enclosed, okay? And you also have to have a five foot walkway at the beginning of the first step and at the top. So your landing has to be five feet. What that does on the, on the second floor, namely, is push that stairwell out to the middle of the floor. And keep in mind, it has to be enclosed. So if I remember correctly, that's where the, one of the uh, meeting uh, offices were on the right hand side of the building. That stairwell is going to put a wrinkle in the second floor. So in, the, in order to preserve taxpayer money and really look at the benefit of having that stairwell there, um, I did decide to allow him to remove that stairwell because we can always access the stairwell in the back. What that does is save us, again, more money from changing any kind of any other new plans we have to do. Um, but it also just allows us to move forward. But since we took the council chambers out, it does, did change the scope. Um, so we, he is requesting an additional $8,400 for that. And that is uh, basically the explanation of the ordinance that will be coming up. But I did want to clarify that in the city manager portion before it got to vote for council. Um, upcoming legislation, um, as I said last time, assessments legislation in August. That's your street lights. That is your nuisance abatement that become cut your grass. And that is your water and sewer uh, leads. Board of Zoning Appeals update. This Wednesday, July 17th, we have a BZA hearing. It's gonna have four things in front of it. Um, one of the things they will be discussing is a variance for a gentleman who lives in Twin Creeks, who um, owns a parcel of land right next to Twin Creeks where the actual uh, development ends, but it's still zoned ARPA. So back in the day when the city was applying zoning for Twin Creeks, they just put ARPA over this massive area thinking it was going to blow up. Well, it never did. And Miss, uh, I don't know if I'll name his name, but the gentleman owns the parcel where Colony Trail ends. He wants to build a single family home on that parcel. Well, I denied his application to do so because I don't have anything in our codes that says you have to be X amount of feet from the front or rear because it's RPUD. And the only covenant, the only things that's restricting RPUD right now are the Twin Creeks covenants. That parcel is not included in the Twin Creeks covenants. 
So I had to deny his permits, and the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals will be voting to allow him to build his single family home, to which he's well in his rights to. He's also well within the setback uh, restrictions, um, according to the Twin Creeks one. I think Twin Creeks, you gotta be 25 feet back from the front set line. He's like 200 feet back. So he is meeting all those requirements, but again, I don't have anything to say, yeah, this is approved or denied because of the lack of uh, requirements in the RPUD zone. How much did I confuse everyone on that? We're good? Okay. <laughs> and we also have a simple variance for a gentleman on um, Adams, South Adams Street. He is redoing his uh, detached garage in the back, like a shed almost. And what that does is puts it a little closer to the side property line than our code allows. I don't have the authority to approve that permit. It has to go in front of the BZA for a variance. That's something else they will be deciding on Wednesday night as well. The third issue is we had a citizen who did everything that she was supposed to do. She wanted a fence in her front yard. She called a company. They said they would come do it. Well, the company filled out the permit. They also just immediately went to her house and started working on the fence without having the approved or denied permit back. They threw this fence up in a matter of two days. So what do we think happened? It is too high. It's 36 inches. Our code only allows two and a half feet. And we also have a thing in there that says you can't obstruct traffic at visibility at the intersection. And most people jump to the visibility at the intersection for vehicles. But that also means pedestrian traffic on the sidewalks as well. And when you're at the stop sign there on the side of her house, wanting to turn left or right on the Jefferson, you can see the oncoming traffic on Jefferson very well, but what you can't see is a sidewalk in front of her house. So if there's a kid on a tricycle, they're not gonna see the kid till the kid's getting right across the street. So that's something the Board of Zoning Appeals are gonna to have to vote on too. Are they gonna allow her to keep the fence? Are they gonna make her tear it down? Are they gonna keep it with modifications? Um, but again, that is something that the Board of Zoning Appeals will have to um, vote on. However, they decide that is the final word because it is the Board of Zoning Appeals. So if they say you gotta remove it, she's gonna have to remove it. If they say lower it, so you'll have to do that. And if she said, they say take out the traffic obstruction, then she'll have to comply to that as well. Um, so it's a very unfortunate situation for our resident to go through this. I've been in contact with the company. They gladly talked to me on day one and have not returned a single call from, phone call from me since. So um, it's an unfortunate situation, but the Board of Zoning Appeals will have to get involved in that, and we'll have to see how they decide how she will have to move forward. And the last thing they will be uh, voting on is Bell Manor was sold to a private developer, and it will become 53 market rate apartments, not low income, market rate apartments. It is a permitted use in that district. We have to allow them to put the apartments there. Um, when Bell Manor was given up and I knew we weren't taking it. I think a lot of people knew what was coming with it and that would be someone would buy it, put apartments in there. And that is what's going on. A guy out of, um, I wanna say Virginia, has bought the property and they have their plans already approved through the county. Uh, there'll be 43, um, what, are those, what are those called? 43 single units, studio apartments per se. Only one person can be in those at a time. So 43 units means one person. It's a studio apartment. He's going to have eight one bedrooms and then three two bedrooms. He's seeking the variance because our code, section 1292, off street parking loading, says for apartment complexes, you've got to have two spots for each unit. He has 53 units. He needs 106 spaces. With all the parking that he owns, which is um, some parcels on Pike Street that's now just grass, he's gonna convert those to the main parking lot. He also owns the two parking lots right off north uh, on Main Street. Um, the one where the New Carlisle Health Facilities actually parks, and the one on the corner where last year we had the food stand. Um, he's seeking the variance to allow New Carlisle Health Facilities to keep renting those spots. Um, if they don't allow the variance, He's going to have to use that for parking, and then that facility will not have any parking. So he's actually being a really good community player by going through this. I, as a city manager, don't have the authority to grant that variance because it's not my realm of responsibility. He has to go in front of the BZA to get that. So the BZA will be voting on to allow him to have the not as many as required spots as he is required to in order to allow North Carolina Health Facilities to continue on parking there. 
I did the math. The reason I broke down how many units he's going to have is because if he has 43 studio apartments, only one person can get in, that's 43 spots. He has eight one bedrooms to where he'll allow two people in, so that's another 16 spots. Then he has three two bedrooms that up to three people can be in, so that's three times two, another six. Um, so 43, 16 plus 6, that's 59 ish. 64, 64 spots is what he's going to need if that place was full capacity. The lots that he's going to be developing on Pike Street are going to hold 72. So he'll have enough right off the bat by based off how many units this has. But again, our code states he has to have two for each unit. So that gets him to he's needing 106. He has that now. If they go in and say, no, we're not granting you the variance, it's not going to stop the project. It's just going to, he's going to have to now use that parking for his residence, and then the health facility is going to find some other place to park. So that's why he's going in front of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I also have instructed, not instructed, I've asked the Board of Zoning Appeals, and I have not got the reports done tonight. I'll be doing finish things, those up tonight after the meeting, to really look out for the people on Pike Street. I've talked to a few residents over there. They knew it was coming. They knew it was going to be apartments at some point in time. Their concern was the overflow parking. They didn't want people parking on Pike Street in front of their house. Pike Street is a very unique street here in the city. It's one of my favorite streets we have. Um, it is one way, and it's a narrow street. So um, they, are, they are excited that there's going to be some activity over there. They were just concerned that way. Is it going to be low-income housing? No, it's not. And then two, where's the parking going to be? So I am expecting a large turnout here Wednesday night for that meeting. Um, but I have stressed to the BZA to, allow, to make them put landscape screening around the parking lot so when you're pulling in, your headlights are not shining into someone's house, um, which they have already agreed to do. The BZA will just make it official. Um, but again, that's, they're going through the process of what they're, what they're supposed to be doing, and that is getting the variance. So that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, questions for Mr. Bridge. I just had one on, your, on the back on the fences. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fence that you were referencing that was put up, what kind of fence was it? Like a solid wood fence? Yeah, it's a picket fence without the little thingies up top. But it's like slat here, slat here, so it's off, so you really can't see through it. What would it take to go back and look at that code for fences out front? You know, it's something I would not recommend. Why not? Because you're putting the public at risk. Depends on the fence, I think. Okay, so you allow a chain link fence there you can see through. Right. I mean, initial thought, yes. Yeah, okay. So if someone doesn't take care of their yard and they have weeds growing up around the fence. I mean, I, I think there's a couple of fences now. I mean, I'm not pointing them out for any particular reason, but like the fences that are made out of like, not logs, but you know I'm saying they're kind of like a heavy, rough timber. It's got like two bars that are extremely see-through. Um, I don't know, it's just something, I, I mean, because I've seen a couple of the houses in town that have the wood fence out front that's like this tall, and I think it looks just about tall. I think it's a horrible code, to be honest. Uh, I would like to see it be revisited someday. I don't know what that would take, but. That is up for council. Right. But that's for you guys. I will definitely give my opinion on it when it comes to it. Most definitely. Um, but I think, I mean, if you think of it like that, there maybe there is restrictions about, you know, if you do a standard, hole and two slats you're not you're seeing right through that exactly you're seeing right through that now when it comes to the chain link i don't like chain links because people let stuff grow in them and it's it's tough to, to keep up on that mm -hmm. um, but you do have a massive visibility issue especially with the pedestrian aspect of it on the sidewalk right. right thank you and if we're going to do that what i would like to see done at the same time is the median need with fence is right now our requirements for swimming pools require that you got to have a minimum five foot fence around your backyard. Mm -hmm. That to me is crazy because most people get a standard four feet chain link fence and it's meant to keep people out in your yard. Someone trying to get to your pool that extra foot ain't gonna stop. They're gonna go over a five foot fence just as easy. They're gonna go with a four foot fence. So what we see happening, a lot of the people who buy a house that already has a chain link fence in their backyard, that's a standard four foot. They wanna get a pool. <coughs> Now they have to jump through hurdles just to get a pool because they, have, they already have fencing around their backyard, but it's not a foot higher. And then what they end up doing is either adding onto the other fence they have, or they put special fencing around the pool itself. Mm -hmm. And usually uh, nine times out of 10, it doesn't look the best. Whereas you just let them have a four feet tingling fence and 
you're good to go. Do you have a lot of pool yes. permits coming and, in? Yes, more so now than ever. When I first started, not many, but now that they sell these pools at Walmart, you can go and blow up in your backyard or get the ones with the plastic with the um, plastic supports. Yeah. You see a, you see them pop up all the time now. Right. Yeah. Ms. McKenzie. What time is the zoning meeting? It's 5.30. Anyone else for Mr. Bridge and his report? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yep. All right, moving on. Two comments from members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium, your name and address, and try to keep it around five minutes if you please. None? All right, moving on. Committee reports in the tonight. Drop down to resolutions. One uh, with action tonight. Ms. Burner. Okay, we have resolution 19-09R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution amending the City of New Carlisle Rules of Council. Sounds like it dies for lack of motion. Okay. Dies for lack of motion. Moving on. No, dive. <laughs> we have ordinance. We got ordinance yes, nineteen dash nineteen E introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An emergency ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept addendum <coughs> number one to contract for architectural services to renovate a building on real property located at one hundred one South Main Street, New Carlisle, Ohio authorized by ordinance 19-07. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we accept 19-19E. I'll second that. Thank you, sirs. And an explanation to this ordinance is to piggyback off the city manager report. We changed the scope of the project and uh, amended the overall contract price by about $8,400, and that's why we have to go back in front of council. Council, any discussion? <laughs> you okay, Mr. Bird? Yes, fine. Okay. Yep, that's good. Yeah. I will repeat what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, I actually will say something on this. Um, you know, I was one of the people that wanted council chambers in this building more than anything. I cannot stand having meetings in this building. Um, but at the same time, I think regardless of that, is, if chambers is in the new city building, we're still moving in the right direction. We're getting out from underneath, you know, rental payments to a building we'll never have. Uh, is it exactly the perfect building what we want? Maybe not, uh, but I think it's still a, a responsible and right step in the right direction for the city as a whole. I know I've talked to a couple of businesses down there that are super excited to have the city move down there because I think it's gonna pick up uh, traffic for some of the businesses and the restaurants and whatnot. So. Thank you for all the work you've been doing on this, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Anyone else? When you're ready. Good. All right. Mrs. McKenzie. Yes. Mrs. Hopkins. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. So much. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Six zero. All right. Under other business before. Um, well, I'll go ahead and let you read other business, actually, first. Go ahead and read it? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The Crime Watch meeting will happen Wednesday, August 13th um, at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you. Uh, also, need a uh, motion to excuse Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Excuse Mr. Lindsay. Huh? No. Cobb and uh, second. Who was the second? I'll second. Me? Mrs. McKenzie? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Champ? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Thank you. Uh, executive session, none tonight. Any other discussion, council, before we wrap it up? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Shammy. I move to adjourn. I second it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>